Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolays at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this last game is going to be between Emblis and El Torero, El Torero on Badlands. So, without fur further ado, let us begin. Emblis going for the Cloggy Bot Factory, and El Torero going for the Shield Bot Factory, which is a matchup on this map that's pretty classic, honestly. This is, to me, this is the map to use shields on. Honestly, it's just, I don't know what it is. I guess it's because it is a relatively small map with a pretty clear path between the bases and a lot of hills to work with. But for whatever reason, I always thought that shields work particularly well on this map. No particular reason why, though. Honestly, if you think about it on paper, it should be relatively even between the two. Because, I mean, hills are basically just good for static defenses primarily, or for things like crabs, so Spider would have a real advantage. But this map kind of fell out of popularity a little after spiders became good. <laughs> like, spiders top being garbage tier, or at, least, or at best C tier. But that was even then, like a year and a half ago, I think. Yeah, Badlands has not been played for a long time. But I guess Emblis is coming back. I mean, they wanted to play some of the classic maps, so hey, that's cool. I mean, this is kind of a nice map to see after a long time. So at this point... El Torero doing a pretty good job just holding off attacks, though. Emblis, nice harassing on both sides. Keeping El Torero on their toes. And at this point, there's actually... Well, one Metal Extractor went down. The Defender's going to go down, too. And another Metal Extractor is at risk. Probably not going to die, though. Oh, no, it is. That Metal Extractor totally going down. Very nice harassment from Emblis. And I think a third one might go down. This is a bit greedy, but it could work. And nice micro around that. Didn't really get the line of sight to block, but it still worked well enough. That... That's three Metal Extractors down for the cost of two Glaives. Actually, possibly even the cost of one Glaive. Yeah, that was really well done, and a Defender, too. So, very nice harassment from Emblis. At the same time, though, they didn't expand much in their main base. They expanded a little to the side. At this point, El Torero and Emblis have about the same economy. And Emblis, unfortunately, that Solar Wall working against them... Honestly, Solar Walls like this have kind of fallen out of favor. I haven't seen them used in a long time. I think partly because of situations like that where someone's trying to run around a metal extractor, it makes it a lot harder to fight them because they have the solar collectors as line of sight blockers. I mean, part of the point of the solar collectors is to prevent a lot of units from hitting at once, but if one unit can get in and deal the damage needed, it kind of doesn't matter. And that Lotus, I mean, it has a range all the way down here too, but it doesn't even make a difference with all the solar collectors in the way. It's probably why it's become more of a partial wall. Like the way El Torero is doing it, that's a bit more of a popular thing to do. Either have a partial wall or wall to the edge to prevent units from sneaking around. And a Gremlin Scout from Emblis. Wow! Another Gremlin Scout. An early one this time, too. So this is very old school. And unfortunately, getting revealed. So Emblis, their spy didn't quite manage to do all the things it needed to do without dying. Looks like it's just accepting his fate. No, it's running away. But at this point, El Torero fully aware Emblis knows what's going on. Doesn't know where Emblis' scout is, but knows there is one. But yeah, that is... That is some old school strategies right there. I mean, this... This gremlin thing is one of those things where it's always good to do it from time to time. It falls in and out of favor, and if you do it when it's not in favor, people do not expect it. And then people start to look for it. And then you just stop doing it because then people start looking for it because they don't know what to expect. And then after a while people expect, oh, there's no more gremlins anymore. And then you throw it at him again. It's a great mix-up setup. It's a meta setup, though. You're really playing the meta. So you have to know what the meta is. And at this point, the meta is no gremlins. So this is a really good idea. Like, right now, that's really a great strategy. Just given how it's fallen out of favor, people don't really do it anymore. People don't really look for it anymore is the bigger, pro is the bigger thing. Bigger reason it works. So overall, right now, Ambliss, I think they're... I think. 23 to 12 metal per second. Emblis is way ahead. Expanding to the south... Well, expanding pretty quickly over to the southeast. Really stopping El Torero from attacking. Even with the Roaches. Nice defense here, though. Roach is dealing with a few of these glaives. Looks like... Yeah, just one Roach. But hey. That's kind of what El Torero needs to do. They are falling behind an economy. Emblis able to just reclaim the middle of the map. I mean, that's what they got the economy from. But still, getting to the southeast pretty easily. El Torero expanding a bit slower. So right now... Emblis... Still harassing in here, still taking out Metal Extractor after Metal Extractor, keeping El Torero's economy down. And keeping their own economy pretty well defended, so honestly at this point, Emblis, very nice hit and run attacks. 
getting hit by a couple roaches, but honestly, there's been a lot of value so far. And of course, the gremlin's still here. The gremlin is here, so when the shield ball switch happens, or say a rogue switch happens, Endless will know right away. And are they aware of this? This is the one thing about this map, though. And they are. They do have radar in the position. The one thing about this map, the one thing about the way the lanes work in this map, not so much lanes, but these valleys here, radar in this map is kind of weak. It ends up feeling a bit bigger than it really is just due to the way the radar works. You have to build a lot of it, but it looks like this radar is in a good enough position. It can look through here and find all these bandits coming in. The Zeus, however, is going to have a hard time. It should be able to take out two or three bandits before going down, but it is screwed. Actually, not even two. Not even able to get in enough. It can't turn around. What the heck? Did not expect that to happen. I thought the Zeus would be able to take out more. I'm a little surprised, honestly. Yeah, El Toledo trying to turn this around. They're trying to get their own harassment in there. And Emblis Commander with... Well, no real upgrades right now. Bandits could be a problem. Main problem, though, is the Northwest. And also, the Southeast, yeah, the expansion's being slowed down a bit. It hasn't been actually hampered in any specific way, but it has been slowed. And now we see there is the Outlaw. Are there thugs yet? There are thugs upcoming. Or forthcoming, I suppose. So that is going to be a thing. That's going to be a thing to deal with. But, like I said, Gremlin here, so Emblis knows. As long as Emblis is paying attention, it is not going to be a problem. The only problem, though, is that these are a lot of bandits, and what's there to deal with it? A warrior, which... Sorry, a Zeus, which doesn't do much. Ticks, which do actually quite a lot. And otherwise, not much else. Defenses in the main base are going to help, but other... Oh, there's a warrior. That's good. That warrior is necessary, but is it going to be enough? And I think at this point, El Torero is starting to really expand hard. Like they're getting their... Even without Reclaim, they're already 5 metal per second ahead. And the harassment coming in here is not being dealt with. Not sure what happened, Endless. Did they, dis they didn't disconnect, did they? Oh! No, they left the room. They didn't leave the game. They're still connected, but this is not good for them. I mean, their early harassment basically being responded to in kind later on, which at this point in the game, given that there's a pretty good territory advantage for El Terrero right now, that's not what Endless wants. Yeah, I don't understand the Zeus here. I think what they're expecting is the Thug Law Ball, where the Zeus would make some sense. But against against all these bandits, no. Glaives and warriors. Primarily warriors if you're not going to go for counter raids. But at the same time, there are some counter assaults, which is where the Zeus does work fairly well. And El Torero's commander, it's not going to be too threatened at this point. Bandits forcing the Zeus back. And there's not much that the commander is losing by being forced back a little bit right now. Especially given all the reclaim these Zeus are going to provide, which is probably about 50? No, 140 metal. Wow. Okay. That was 150, but no, not quite. But still close. El Torero is actually losing a fair amount in the north. So this is still working kind of interestingly. There aren't a lot of bandits left either, and El Torero is... They're still building a few. That is the one thing. The bandits are not gone. But that warrior being a problem... I mean, the thing is, the Zeus is tanking the warrior. If the warrior gets hit by the rock, by the rogues, it's dead. Ah, now the... Oh, man, that was the problem. The thing is, the Zeus is the defense. The warrior is the offense. If the warrior dies, then the Zeus basically can't live because it cannot deal damage fast enough to survive. And vice versa, the warrior dies because it doesn't have something tanking for it. And Emblis' commander trying his best, but it does not have any easy way of getting through this. And a tick trying to... Well, the tick helps. But not... There's no support. That's the problem. Emblis' commander totally unupgraded. So no way for it to deal any significant amount of damage. Especially not when slowed. El Torero has lost a fair amount of economy and territory space, though. I mean, Emblis is not letting this go easily. But it is going to be still an issue. I mean, there needs to be some rebuilds going on here. And he, has this not been rebuilt the entire game? I don't think this metal extractor over here in the south side of the map has been rebuilt this entire game. And now Emblis' commander under a lot of threat. Another tick to try to deal with it, but it's not going to be there. And Emblis losing their commander. Next thug shot. Well, next one that hits. Down it goes, and I think that's going to be GG. These two Zeus over here fighting valiantly, but once they're down, that's going to be it. 
I mean, Endless right now, that was actually a big blow to their economy, losing their commander like that. Not to mention the reclaim potential that was lost. Oh, if those warriors had come in like a minute earlier. That would have been a totally different story to the southeast. But unfortunately, a little bit too late. I think that's the big thing, and Endless pointing out in chat, they built Zeus too early, and I agree. The warriors are... I think that's the one thing Emblis didn't quite realize. Warriors have health regen now. It's a bit of a newer thing, but they do, and it's helpful. It's a big buff. Even with all the nerfs they got after the massive buff, they were still massively buffed. So warriors are great to have. Their weakness, of course, is speed, as always, but hey, if you can get through that, and if you have Glaive, like, Glaive Warrior is pretty good set up, and Scythe is also a good one. Zeus, I can see it working really well against the ball. But until the ball's set up, or if there's a bunch of rogues out, because they would be, that's where glaives come in, dealing with the rogues. And like I said, Emblis knows what's up. I think they just didn't realize that warriors are that powerful of units. Although it looks like Emblis is trying to take advantage of the hill. Do they know? No, they don't actually know. It's going to work out, though, because neither is El Torero. Yeah, El Torero just getting an unpleasant surprise with their rogues. Unfortunately, not unpleasant enough for Emblis' liking. That's a good position of the Warriors, though. Just get it behind the crest of the hill so that when the units try to get through, it's not totally obvious until it's too late that there's units there that really depend on having a very close-range shot to their opponent. Because that's the Warriors' main weakness, and crests of hills are great at just dealing with that weakness. But it looks like... Oh, yeah, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. Out of combat regen. Which is not going to matter for that one, Warrior, because... Wow, that was blown up with extreme prejudice. The only way I can refer to that particular me method of death. But otherwise, yeah, 20 health per second out of combat. Still, just not enough stuff. Emblis just does not have the economy to build up what they need. And they aren't rebuilding this metal extractor. They aren't rebuilding a lot of metal extractors. They're trying to rebuild the one over outside of their base, but not the ones that are really safe. I don't know why, but I think they're just getting distracted. I think they're getting really focused on trying desperately to just push away everything El Herrero tries to do. Which is not enough, I'm afraid. That really isn't. But yeah, I just feel like if basically they've been building the units they're building now five minutes ago and building the units five minutes ago now, em the, the Emblis would probably be winning this. That flip around would probably do the trick. And even right now, I think... Oh, uh, maybe. Is there, I mean, if they rebuilt this metal extractor, that would help a lot. And they are getting the warriors and glaives they need, but unfortunately, a lot of ro a lot of rogues were built, and it's dealing with that that's the problem. And yeah, scythes do have passive regen. I'm fairly certain they have passive regen. Let's see. They have it. Yeah, idle regen it takes 10 seconds out of combat, but then they heal 20 health per second. And given the way scythes work, they're often out of combat, so that actually works really powerfully. And Glaives, why do they march into the Outlaws? That's a good way to die. That's actually why Outlaws are there, to protect the Thugs from Glaives. And also to slow down nearby units so Thugs have more time to shoot at them. And yeah, that's... That is game, unfortunately. But yeah, it really just came down to the wrong order of units. I think that El Terrero thought that Thugball would come sooner or something. Sorry, Emblis thought the Thugball would come sooner or something, or maybe thought that Warriors wouldn't work, but... That was still interesting, I and mean, given that Emblis had just come back, I think that was a really good game for someone who's probably fairly rusty. I mean, I'm quite impressed. Especially the early part of that game, that micro very early on, getting rid of those metal extractors, like three metal extractors for two glaives? That was a good deal. That was a really powerful attack early on. I just feel like it wasn't as capitalized on as it could have been later in, like, in the mid to late game. But anyway, that was that, and that is going to be it for me tonight, so thank you for watching. And as I keep pointing out before, I do have a Dark Souls 3 thing I've been doing as well, which you can watch that too on the YouTube channel. But yeah, that is it for this. Actually, a bigger, more important, and less self-promoting... Okay, why is self-promotion a bad thing on my own channel? So it probably isn't a bad thing. But in a less self-promotional context, I am not going to be here this next weekend. So there is not going to be a cast for on the next weekend, Saturday, Sunday. So don't be hoping for one there won't be one i'm gonna be in seattle trying my best to win in a skullgirls tournament and possibly also a guilty gear tournament though admittedly i don't play exert as often as i play skullgirls so skullgirls is the better chance 
I don't know. I'll be happy if I go 2-2, honestly. Even 1-2 would be about the same as last time. So yeah, that is going to be next week. So this Tuesday, I'm going to be doing something for the Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare Spring thing, the Spring Cabal's next game. So I'm planning on doing. And then nothing until the following Tuesday. So that'll be, that's my casting schedule for the next week. I will try to put up Dark Souls episodes every single day, though. Just have enough of a backlog that I can put it up every night or every day while I'm in Seattle. But as far as my live content is concerned, there is not going to be any of that from the from next Tuesday to the following Tuesday. Next Tuesday, or this coming Tuesday in two days, there's something. And then the following week, but nothing in between for live content. So yeah, just bear that in mind. But otherwise, and wish me luck, I guess, at the tournament. So, And thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.